Alrighty, we're back on this wing repair and my new extrusion has arrived at this grey bit here. Okay, so I put it in, you can see better here. It tells you in the installation instructions to make up some 50 thou that sort of strips there to uh, effectively simulate the top skin because this skin is going to have to be lifted up to get access for drilling so we need to make these just pin them in place on the ribs that's going to give us the height the up or down position of the spar if we get one on each rib so that's what I'm mainly concerned with at the moment getting strips and clamps into various places um, the skin is a bit floppy, we don't need to worry about that as long as the spar is at the correct height with respect to all the ribs and pressed reasonably firmly against, against the web. So I'm going to put some clamps in here as well. Alright, we'll get a bit of that done and have a look. Alright, we've got a lot of clamps on there. Put on a little bit more. You can see just to orientate you, there's the wing coming right through here to the root end is the new the new part there in grey. Alright, and it's sandwiched there. And I've got some spring clamps on it. So you get a better view there. This is the new the new extrusion. This is the web. That's clamped at the bottom there just for just because it seemed like the right thing to do and it's clamped at the top there to sandwich the new section fairly tightly in between and we've got here steel aluminum aluminium web aluminium extrusion another doubler and then a steel plate that's the strongest part of the spar where the joint plate to the fuselage is that's the fuselage joint bolt holes there all right now what i've done is i've got some well, as many clamps as I could muster through lightning holes pushing there pushing down and I decided to mount the landing gear because that gives me a really good clamping force through that way as long as I'm confident that the height of the spar is okay I can clamp that bolt the landing gear on and that, that really pushes squeezes those uh, laminations together well there and also I've drilled a few undersized holes where I'm able to pick them up and put some temporary undersized fasteners in to really squeeze this whole bunch together that's going to give me a bit better swarf control um, as I drill for the remainder of the fasteners I've also put some brick pins going down here that's not recommended at this stage but I've used eighth holes where there will eventually be a 532 fastener so if they do move a few thou when this is finally deburred and clamped um, it'll be okay they'll be drilled to a larger size so that's it for the moment the next thing to do is to take a few of these out carefully lift the front skin put them back hopefully without moving the moving this extrusion it's got clamps to the web, enough clamps to the web and temporary fasteners and the gear so it won't move and then I can get access from the other side behind this skin to start drilling and we need to make up some little drill guides and start drilling and reaming alright I'm back and I have lifted up that front skin and then just replaced these if you like um, strips which are going to simulate the skin just to just to maintain the level of the spar back onto the ribs clamps are all still in place and my temporary bolts through are all still in place so it shouldn't have moved while I just released that skin now I've got to make a drill guide because the only way I can drill it is from behind here or pilot it anyways from behind here so I've given that some thought and what I have got 
is, uh, is all of the old fasteners that came out. Now, if I was to just face off the head there and drill through this and part it off, I would have a, a way of reasonably accurately piloting the holes in the new part without uh, touching the edge of the old part. So that's what we're going to do. give ourselves a bit of room and uh, part that off as long as we can let's get the drill just left in there to catch it, it should be okay <laughs> well, after a little bit of deburring and a little bit of fettling this is what we have and I'm hoping that's kind of long enough to place in these holes behind here, which I have got, and put a small drill through and end up with a pilot hole in the new part. So we'll give that a go. Just make sure this is a nice tight fit. Ah, oh, the light's going to be really bad. Stand by. Make sure that this is going to be a nice push fit in these holes. Let's get in close there. A nice push fit in these holes behind. Which it is. And I'm going to get my right angle windy, which is the only way in there. And just drill through. Alright, it's a bit awkward, but I can just get that in position. Feel the kind of neutral position where it goes in easy and get through to the other side there uh, and that should be pretty accurate all right I've been a little while now drilling and I've got these pilot holes here and it seems to be going quite well where I have got I just pull that rib out of the way if I can get the camera in line where I have got a reference my fingers out of the way they seem to have come through pretty much straight where I've got an extra plate this side for reference. They look nicely centered in there. Uh, the rest of them, as you go further out, there's no, uh, there's no surefire way of telling. Um, these, they get smaller diameter as you go out. I ended up with a very thin wall, one of these, but seems to have done the job and that's enough for today. I'll clear up my mess and not leave loose articles in the wing. We'll hoover up the swarf tomorrow.